Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today we're going to be covering Esther 6 through 8 and Acts 6. Father, I just ask for a blessing of speech recognition so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for those who have tuned in all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Mordecai honored Esther 6. That night, the king could not sleep. So he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded that Malachi had exposed Bigathan and Ter Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Ezra. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him. His attendant answered, and the king said, Who is in the court? Now, Haman has just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he had set up for him. His assistant answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. And when Haman entered, the king asked him, What should be done for the man the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would rather honor than me? So he answered the king, For the man the king is delighted to honor, have them bring a royal robe the king has worn, and a horse the king has ridden, one with a royal crest placed on its head. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to the one the king's most noble princes, and let the, them robe the man the king delighted to honor, and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delighted to honor. Go at once, the king commanded Haman. Get the robe and the horse, and do just as you have suggested. For Mordecai, the Jew, who sits at the king's gate, do not neglect anything you have recommended. So Haman got the robe and the horse. He robed Mordecai, and he led him, led him on horseback through the city streets, proclaiming before him, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Afterwards, Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman rushed up home with his head covered in grief and told Sarah, his wife, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His advisors and his wife, uh, Zerah said to him, Since Mordecai, before whom your downfall has started, is of Jewish origin, you can stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. You cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. While they were still talking with him, the king's insurance arrived and hurried her ran away to the banquet Esther had prepared. Herman, imp Herman impaled Esther 7. So the king and Harman went to Queen Esther's banquet, and as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given to you, and what is your request? Even up to half the kingdom. It will be granted. The queen, Esther, answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my position, and spare my people 
this is my request for I am for I and my people have been sold to be destroyed killed and annihilated and if I and my people have been oh I and sold and destroyed killed in the land if we had merely been sold as male and female slaves I would have kept quiet but because no such distress would justify disturbing the king King Exorus asked Queen Esther who is he where is he the man who has dared to do such a thing Esther said an adversary and an and enemy this vile Haman then Haman was terrified before the king and queen the king got up in a rage left his wine and went out into the palace ground but Haman realizing that the king had already decided his fate stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall Herman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclined. The king exclaimed, Will he even molest the queen while she is with me in the house? As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Then Habron, one of the anches, attended the king's, attending the king, said, A pole! reaching to a high height of fifty cubits stands by Haman's house he had it set up for Mordecai who spoke up to help the king the king said impale him on it so they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai then the king's fury subsided the king's etiquette in behalf of the Jews Esther 8 that same day King Exorus gave Queen Esther the estate of Haman the enemy of the Jews and Mordecai came into the princess to of the the princess of the presence of the king for Esther had told him he was related to her the king took off his signet ring which he had reclaimed from Haman and presented it to Mordecai and Esther appointed him over Haman's estate Esther again pleaded with the king falling at his feet and weeping she begged him to put an end to the evil plan of Haman the agitate which he had devised against the Jews then the king extended the golden scepter to Esther, and she arose and stood before him. If it pleases the king, she said, and if he regards me with favor, and thinking it is the right thing to do, and if he is pleased with me, let an order be written over ruling the dispatches that Hanan, son of Hamadeth, the agitate, devised and wrote to destroy the Jews in all the king's provinces for how can I bear to see disaster fall on my people how can I bear to see the destruction of my family King Exodus replied to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew because Haman attacked the Jews I have given his estates to Esther and they have impaled him on the pole he sat up now write another decree in the king's name in behalf of the Jews as seems best to you and seal it with the king's signet ring for now for no document written in the king's name and sealed with his ring can be revoked at once the royal scar scarlets were summoned on the twenty-third day of the third month the month of seven seven they wrote out all Mordecai's orders to the Jews and to the satraps governors 
and nobles of the hundred and twenty-seven provinces stretching from india to kush these orders were written in the script of each province and the language of each people and also to the jews and their own script and language mordecai wrote in the name of king exorus sealed the dispatch with the king's signet ring and sent them by mounted courier who rode fast horses especially bred for the king the king's etiquette granted the jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves to destroy kill and annihilate the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them and their women and their children and to plunder their property the property of their enemies and they the day that uh, the day appointed for the jews to do this in all the provinces of king exorus was the thirteenth day of the twelfth month the month of adar a copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so that the jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies the couriers riding the royal horses went out spurred on by the king's command and the edict was issued in the citadel of susa the triumph of the jews esther eight fifteen when mordecai left the king's presence he was wearing royal garments of blue and white a large crown of gold and purple robe of fine linen and the city of susa held a joyous celebration for the jews it was a time of happiness and joy gladness and honor in every province and in every city to which the edict of the king came there was joy and gladness among the jews with fasting and celebrating and many people of the other nations became jews because fear of the jews had seized them well there you have it they just changed over to judaism right then right there and how they did it we don't know but anyway that is the book of esther um six through eight um and now we'll be moving into acts six right acts six Tomorrow we will be back into Esther again. Okay, Acts 6 in the New Testament. Let's flip some pages here. The Choosing of the Seven, Acts 6. In those days when the number of the disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food so the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of god in order to wait on tables brothers and sisters choose seven men from among you whom are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom and we will turn this reasonably over this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word this proposal pleased the whole group and they chose stephen a man full of faith and of the holy spirit also philip perkius nekar nekanar timon Hermias and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Jews, to Judaism. They presented the, these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. 
so the word of God spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen is seized. Acts 6, 8 Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogues of the freedmen, as it was called, and Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Silica and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, We have heard Stephen speaking blasphemy, blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law, and they seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. And they proceeded false witness, who testified this fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us all who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Okay, that concludes Acts 6. Also, concluding the Bible with Briscoe 2020 for the day. Alrighty then. Tomorrow we'll be covering Esther 9 through 10 and Acts 7, 1 through 21. Father, I just thank you so much for your word and the availability for me to be the messenger of your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen. All right, friends, that does it for the Bible with Frisco 2020 for the day. I have been so gracious. It has been so gracious of a a gift for me to be your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. And so, therefore, I do hope that you come back tomorrow because, well, I'll be here, and I hope that you are.